Lord spoke and her daughter spoke about um, from both sides of the prodigal son. And how she was the intercessor praying over her daughter to come home. And I was that prodigal kid. And it had never hit me how hard my family prayed for me. And how long they daily prayed for my return. And it just an incredible respect for my grandmother and my parents for all that they did because without them praying, she talked about, I didn't realize this, um, when the disciples are in the storm in the Sea of Galilee, Jesus is praying, and he lets them sit in that storm. Okay, we know that story. But I didn't realize that in Mark 6, she said that uh, it says he was, when he came out on the sea, he was going to walk on by. Right. Yeah. He was going to pass. I didn't know that. <laughs> Until they called out for him. Right. If these people were not praying over my life that the devil couldn't have me, I'd probably I'd be dead. And I look at what a power and what a responsibility that places on me now that I have been brought through. So who am I to be praying over wholeheartedly, fighting the devil so that he cannot have them? Right. That they yes. can find Jesus, whether they're saved yes. or not. It doesn't matter whether they have a specific calling or an anointing. It doesn't matter that we're just supposed to be praying wholeheartedly right. for these people. Right. And then, so praying over situations in my life. Well, God, he broke so many different things, and I cried the entire weekend. Um, but one thing was I, I still had a seed of bitterness in my stomach towards the father of my children. Um, and so that first night we're talking about you're going to reach out into their house and you're going to speak life into them. You're going to speak, so you know, praying for his salvation, praying that God really moves in him, not only for his own soul, but for my children as well. And the whole, just for everything. And I couldn't believe when I was there, I thought, God, you're taking me to this man, this man that's caused me so much pain. He says, yes, and you're going to pray for him. It broke something in me, and I prayed so hard. Now, this is, their dad won't answer the phone uh, when I call when they're with him. He won't let me talk to him. We're on our way back, and I get a phone call from a number I don't know. Oh, yeah. It's my kids calling from their own little texting app that he had set up for them that they could call and talk to me. And then my son's texting me and calling me, and I thought, that's the miracle. Yeah. And you, if you know the situation, you're like, Oh, just prayer, what prayer does when we truly go to God in it. Yes. And it just, it, it was just an incredible, you can't explain it type of weekend. Right. To be able to sit there in the presence of God and his angels and all these women that are so passionately seeking him. Women you don't know and people speaking over and just miracles happening. Women uh, with muscular sclerosis, she had. She gets up. She walked in with a cane. She gets up on that stage and she's dancing around. We just saw miracle after miracle. What God wants to do in our lives. And on the way back, I'm praying. You know, God, what else do you want um, to reveal from this weekend? And yeah, I pray the pray. I want your hands and feet. I want your heart. I want your eyes. And He hits me with, if you want to be like me. You better be out there doing what I did. You better be out there healing. You better be out there raising the dead. You better be out there casting out demons in my name. And so I just, it, it, you can't even express it or explain it. It was just so intense and incredible, and I thank God for every moment of it.